Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Zishan. I'm managing director of the Sulphur Group. Uh, we are a social engineering and marketing agency. Um, one of the things that makes us a little bit different is we represent brands um, in the influencer and brand deals. Um, so we have the brand facing side. Um, and then we also represent influencers and collaborate with some great ones like Shay Mitchell and, and a bunch of others. Um, I don't know if there's a way to get the slides to actually show the whole, whole thing, the format. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. So anyway, I'm kind of going to act like a teacher, right, and tell you guys what to do and not do. Um, the first thing, um, we're going to go through a few do's and don'ts for brands. Uh, the first one for brands is define your audience. So there's a lot of brands out there that go and pick influencers, um, and they say, okay, you got to figure out what influencers to pick. Um, you got to take a step back before that and realize that you're going to pick those influencers based on the audience that they have. Um, and the way you do that, you need to build a customer profile and understand who it is you're trying to target. So that's one of the most important things that we realize with brands is sometimes they just don't know who their customer profile is. They go pick some influencers and it may not work correctly and then you know they go and blame the influencers. So that's, that's not the right way to do it. You want to define a very granular level customer profile. Two, um, go above and beyond. So a lot of brands will just send influencers the product that they have in a very like normal, traditional manner. Um, and they're not gonna get as much engagement as someone that goes above and beyond, creates a customized or curated package just for the influencers. And then of course influencers are gonna wanna post it more than getting a normal uh, product. Three, uh, a lot of times brands will ask influencers to do things like takeovers, right? They'll take over a channel, uh, particularly the brand's channels, and do posts that way. But the truth is that the reason you hire these influencers like yourselves and, and um, you know, people that are really catered to a good audience is they've built this uh, connection with their audience that hopefully matches your customer profile. Um, so have them post it on their channels. Uh, and then you could do things like native amplification or you know reposts and things like that. Uh, here, this, this is one I think that will resonate with a lot of people, but uh, don't just offer gifts, right? Don't just offer your product and then think that the influencers you know, should just post it. I'm sure the product is amazing and a lot of really big brands think it is. Uh, and so they don't wanna offer compensation or money to the influencers. But the truth is you know, that doesn't pay the bills. So brands really should think about offering compensation to the influencers or else you, know, you, you may not get exactly what you're looking for. And it, it's a true marketing uh, you know, medium today. So it, it's, it's something that you should invest in and there's definitely an ROI to it. Uh, five, so this is something that we're starting to see a lot, but influencers will grow their audiences uh, and they'll get some great reach, uh, amazing followers. And then as soon as they do and they start getting brand deals, all of a sudden all their posts uh, become sponsored. And so the ratio of sponsored posts to non-sponsored posts is becoming a good metric to gauge whether a brand should work with an influencer or not. All right, let's, let's go to uh, influencers do's and don'ts. So, something that's, that's really part of the political climate today, right? It's, it's just talking about politics, Trump, and all these different things, right? And you hashtag Trump, and you're gonna get a bunch of more engagement possibly. But the truth is, you don't wanna do this when it comes to sponsored posts, right? Brands are not necessarily going to align with a certain political agenda, and usually when you do this, you start to create controversy, and you may not get paid, or whatever it is, but you know, the best thing to do is if you wanna talk about politics, you can, do it in your own organic posts. Uh, don't do it in sponsored posts. Two, um, try to be transparent. I'm gonna move over to this side. Try to be transparent with uh, what's sponsored and what's not. So the FTC is an organization in the United States, but you know, there's other ones like the CMA in the UK and, and you know, various places across the globe. Uh, and this is going to start resonating throughout. So, you know, we think the best thing to do is just tell your audience when it's sponsored, be organic about it, and you know, your audience will trust you more, brands will trust you more, and so effectively, it just becomes a good method all the way around. 
three, uh, don't take on deals you don't believe in. Uh, and I think Jay touched on this, but you know, just do stuff that you really want to do. Uh, try to do brands that you like. You've tried their product. The last thing you want is you know some sort of like fake health thing, and you know some of your audience tries it. They get bad reactions. Uh, you know, worst case, you get sued or something like that. Hopefully not. But you know, try the products. Make sure you like them before you actually engage with the brand, even if they're offering you a ton of money. Uh, a lot of times, something that is a good tell is if they're offering you a lot of money, you've never heard of them, um, that's kind of a, a warning sign. Um, four, be responsive on your posts. So we see a lot of influencers who will post something when they've made a brand deal uh, and then step away from you know, the post that they have and the responsiveness is completely gone. So you know, they say, okay, look, hey, I promised I would deliver a post to the brand. Uh, I've done my job. I don't need to respond to anything. Uh, that doesn't foster the best uh, engagement results. And so you want to try to maintain some sort of responsiveness. It's good to communicate with your audience anyway. It's just general rule of thumb, um, but particularly so on sponsored posts. Uh, five, um, as you start to kind of grow your channels and your audiences, uh, this particularly applies to YouTubers and bloggers, but you, know, you may have a video that's 10 minutes long. Uh, and in that, if you include an integration with a brand that's maybe two minutes or three minutes, make sure you define to the brand, right, that they can only revise that two or three minute portion and not the whole 10 minute video. Uh, there's a lot of times where brands will want some say in some portion that doesn't relate to the brand, but because their video or integration is included in the overall video, uh, it makes it tough you know, to come to a conclusion with the brand. So you wanna make sure all those guidelines and everything else is set very clearly. So these are just kind of some of the short, easy things um, that we're seeing you know, come across, but just makes for good practice when you're doing brand-sponsored deals for influencers. And I'll open up for questions, if anybody's got any. Questions? Anyone? OK. Yes? Ah. Mm -hmm. No, that's a great question. So usually what we like to do is hopefully you're responsive enough to your audience anyway, right? But at least maintain roughly the same level of engagement that you do on a non-sponsored post. On a sponsored one, maybe like you know a third more if you can. So that's kind of uh, you know an idea, but you wanna at the very least maintain the same amount that you do on your regular posts that are not sponsored. Um, and if you can, anywhere between like you know 25 to 30% more if you have the time to do it. Any other questions? Do. Must do for brands and yeah. No, um, for for influencers working with brands. That's a good question. The number one must do. If you just had a, a number one must. Yeah. One shot. Uh, I say keep it organic, right? Try to make it not so sponsored and ad like and spammy, um, because that's going to be good for the brand that you're working with and the partnership deal that you have. Uh, and then second, it's going to be good for your audience too. Not so spammy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really technical, right? So you, you've got to kind of read all the guidelines and see what they say, but a lot of times they don't require you to put it right in the front of the post. Um, most of the agencies are okay with it if you do something like hashtag ad at the end um, or you, know, you put it somewhere in the description or whatever. Right? It depends on where you are and what region you're in, but as long as you follow that guideline, you can pick the minimal if you want to. Um, and not make it sp seem so spammy, uh, but a lot of people will go the safe course and just put it all the way in the front. So we usually like to do it as something that you know wouldn't be that obvious necessarily, right? But you, you just wanna let your audience know that it's sponsored or thank the sponsors as well, and it just creates a clear communication to everyone that okay, they've given you a product for free or they're paying for it. Any other questions? Sure. 
So that kind of goes back a little bit to the political side of stuff, right? So I think what you're asking is why don't influencers use like, you know, their own channels or social media to promote or not promote, you know, things that are happening in the world, causes, good causes, things like that. So yeah, I, I mean, I think it ties a little bit to the political agenda side, right? A lot of social media influencers don't necessarily want to have um, content that talks about the political side of stuff because it's such a controversial topic. Um, and then there's a lot that do though. I mean, th there's definitely some that do. Um, so I think it really depends on the personal preference of the influencer. I, yeah, I don't want to assume, but uh, you know, based on your analytics and what you've seen, what percentage uh, really does try to raise awareness for crises mm. across the world? I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of them do good stuff, right? Do you, but do you have like a a number off the top of my yeah, head? Yeah, off the top. I mean, yeah. if I was to guess, I think it's under fifteen percent, right? Okay. I don't think it's that many, but then. Right you know, a lot of them that are out there, they will oftentimes promote something that they believe in that's good, of course. but they don't necessarily focus on it. So I think it's, it's not that high of a number necessarily just because it's so controversial and edgy. Um, but I mean, I, there's definitely some that do. Yeah. yeah. Well, regardless of all the like influencers that I've met through Inflow that I've, that I've had the chance to spend time with, uh, everyone, you know, is trying to make some type of positive impact yeah, exactly. with what they're trying to do. You know, right. it's not, it's, they're not wasting their time to just try to garner followers. Right, exactly. I'm gonna take two, two more, so one in, in the back. Oh, okay, there. I'll come to you next. I think what Shay said is actually really good, right? I don't think necessarily that um, responding to it is the best thing to you know, kind of promote it. I think you know, focusing on your positivity is, is probably one of the best ways. And then secondly, right, you probably want to ask, ask the brand um, that your deal is with, how they would respond to it, and if, you know, they really want anything, but it's got to align with your, you know, your persona as well. But positivity, I think, always wins. Um, actually, there was a statistic or study that came out, um, I think, less than six months ago, uh, where there was a lot of uh, anti-Semitic comments online, and they did a study on it, um, and the positive reactions or comments in, in response to those um, we're six times more likely to get reposted. And so positivity does seem to win. Uh, next one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so brands are definitely interested in substance. Um, I think sometimes when they're new, they don't necessarily know that that's what they want. But um, substance and organic content always seems to do better than not. So. I think most of the times when brands are looking and hire particular influencers, they do want your organic, um, your organic style, your creative treatment, the way you do stuff. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, I think that sums it up. Thank you all for coming. Thank Any you other for, questions? Thank you to Inflow. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.